Hi, in this video I'll share some more radical freedom on steroids by explaining that you should not surrender yourself to God and give him everything. So you'll discover that you already are surrendered to God so that you'll quit surrendering yourself to him. Question. What does a wrestler do when he's placed in a painful and inescapable position? What does an army do when it is completely surrounded and outnumbered? And what do you do when God tells you that he is madly in love with you? Surrender. Surrender? Well, that's what a lot of believers say. Kind of strange, isn't it? Think about it. Has anyone ever responded with an I surrender when you told them that you love them? If someone did that to me, I would think that that person <clears throat> is thinking that I want to control them or something. Surrender communicates fear. At least the way it is normally used thus. Wrestlers surrender to escape pain. Armies surrender to they don't get slaughtered. And it does so even when Christians use it. It makes it sound like God's ultimate goal is obedience and if he's not obeyed then that there will be punishment. In other words, he wants control over you and he will use fear to get it. But, as you know, God is not like that. At all. First, obedience has its place. But God desires his children to move beyond merely being obedient slaves to being friends who know his heart. Jesus communicated this to his disciples the night before he was crucified. Second, Jesus took care of any and every need for us to fear or be punished on the cross. Third, God is not a cosmic control freak. That's why he created us free, even to the point of allowing us to reject him if we choose so. There can be no love without the freedom to choose whether to love. God is not militant. He is benevolent. He is not trying to get you to surrender to his every bidding. He simply wants you to know the depth of his love for you and he knows that the rest will naturally follow out of knowing that love. Surrender is a poor word to describe our relationship with Christ. Let me ask you this. Have you ever told God, I give you everything. I give you all of me. If you haven't, you're probably not a disciple of Jesus. Not that you have to say those exact words, but the idea within it. If you have, have you told him that more than once? If so, I question why you are re-giving him everything. Did you take it back from him after you gave it? I encourage you to not do that. It's just not a very nice thing to do. Instead, recognize that you already belong to God, you were bought with a price, and everything you have came from God as a gift. Us belonging to God doesn't mean he uses us the way we use our belongings, like our pants, clothing, computers, etc. We belong to God, and God belongs to us the way a husband and wife belong to each other. I mean, we are his bride. It is a mutual belonging of love. It's not about giving yourself to God, as if he needed anything from our side. It's about realizing that we belong to him all along, even before we acknowledged it. When you believed Jesus and became part of the church, you acknowledged that you indeed do belong to Jesus. Here is what I wish to point out. 
possession implies surrender. If you acknowledge that you belong to God, then you are already surrendered to Him. You surrendered when you realized your need for a Savior and came to Jesus. Practically, this means that you have believed that God's ways are a lot more fun and joyous that, than what the world has to offer. Thus, when God tells you to do something, you cheerfully do so not because you are surrendered to him or because it's your duty, but simply because you know that's the most fun and most joyful thing you can do. And if God's good, pleasing and perfect will doesn't seem so fun and joyous to you, then your mind is not renewed in that area. If you come across something like this, all you have to do is ask Jesus why it's so great and I bet he'll tell you, even if he doesn't write then. If you truly believe he, love, if you truly believe he loves you and has your best interest in mind, then he can be trusted. If surrender is to have a place in the believer's vocabulary, it should be to describe the sweet surrendering of giving up your own efforts to try to please God and live upright and instead trusting in what Jesus did and does in and through you. You see, the word surrender is not in my vocabulary in reference to my relationship with God. That's a word which involves my own independent effort. It paints a picture of us waving a white flag to a God of vengeance. Whereas really you were alienated from God and were enemies in your minds, not God's mind, because of your evil behavior. But now he has re reconciled you by Christ's physical body through death to present you holy in his sight without blemish and free from accusation. This is written in Colossians 1, 21, 22. We don't surrender to God. We see him remove the lie that tells us he's against us. When we see this, we drop our plastic sword and squirt gun and enjoy the embrace that had always been wrapped, wrapping us in tenderness, says Andrew Fulford. So, the conclusion. Should you surrender yourself to God and give him everything? The answer is no. Except if you're not born again, which I doubt. If you still want to use the word surrender, then do it in the context of giving up your own efforts to try to please God and live holy and perfect and instead trust in who Christ made you to be. All right, some closing thoughts here. God won't make us do things we don't want to do. Instead, the Bible tells us that God works in us to will, that is to want, and to act in order to fulfill his good purposes. Philippians 2 verse 13. This means that we will we'll genuinely want what God wants. If it's not placed on our hearts, it's not of him. God works through our hearts and minds to cause us to walk in his ways. He's not asking us to live a life we don't want to live. On the contrary, he has placed Christ's desire within us and we're only satisfied as we fulfill them. Whether we realize it or not, our greatest desire is to express Christ in every moment. Sometimes when people hear the term surrender, they imagine their entire lives hanging in a balance as they decide whether or not to go on the missions field. You know that example. The idea is misleading since most believers need to settle in and know Christ in their current circumstances rather than trying to alter them. Although some may end up changing their vocation or the place they live, most of God's children are intended for a setting they already know. So, the simple question for you and me remains, are you open to Christ living through your current everyday life? As you do, you most likely will not think or sing in terms of, 
I surrender. Or, O oh Lord, I offer my life to you. Or, everything I've been through, use it for your glory. Or, things like, Lord, I offer my days to you. Or, lifting my praise to you as a pleasing sacrifice. Or, Lord, I offer you my life. So, in the next video, we're going to talk about the radical nature of how you bring God most glory. Make it a great, great day, beloved, and see you in the next video.